Good morning, everybody. I hope you are well. Sorry, I'm a few minutes late today. Um, the dog did not know whether he wanted to be in or outside, so I've been running around after him for the last few minutes. But here I am, and it is is good to be here, and it's good to be able to share with you this morning a few of my thoughts about the first uh, 15 verses of Mark chapter 15. Um, it's a difficult one, I'll be honest with you, and um, maybe you're listening to it right now, I know a few of you are, um, or if you're listening to it later in the day, it is a heavy one for a Monday, but it's a really important part of the story as we come into this really intense kind of period over the final week actually that we've got in the book of Mark as we look about the um, the crucifixion and then the resurrection of Jesus. And at this point in the story, uh, Jesus is bound up and he is brought by the religious leaders before Pontius Pilate. And Pontius Pilate is the Roman governor of uh, Judea, which is the area that all of this is taking place. Morning, Nick. Oh, I'm glad your dog does the same. Uh, the religious leaders want Jesus gone, uh, but they don't want to be the ones to actually kill him. And they don't actually have the legal authority to kill him, but they know that the Roman governor does. So they decide to take him in front of Pilate. And it's really interesting, actually, if you're somebody who is into history and into facts and maybe struggles with uh, reconciling Christianity to historical fact, then look into the person of Pontius Pilate because there's overwhelming evidence that he did really exist and that he did preside over Jesus's hearing. So that's just an aside, but have a look into him today. So Pilate is really uncomfortable actually with sentencing Jesus to death because he can see no legal fault in him. Jesus claiming to be God or the son of God would not have carried any real weight for punishment because that would have been a religious claim. So instead, this phrase king of the Jews is coined to imply some sort of physical or political authority over the Jewish people, which could ultimately pose a threat to Roman rule. And I find this whole section of text uh, really challenging to pick apart, if I'm honest, because there's this human part of me that's kind of going, come on, Jesus, tell them the truth, tell them the truth. But he doesn't. He, he doesn't actually say anything. Jesus is in full submission to what is about to happen to him. He knows that it needs to happen and it almost feels as though he wants to be found guilty because he knows that being crucified is the only way to bring us eternal freedom. And the other character in this part of the story is this guy Barabbas. He's a murderer, he's a revolutionary. He is someone who is in direct conflict with the authorities and who is absolutely guilty of his crimes. Pilate knows it, the crowd knows it. And because it's Passover, one prisoner can be released. And Pilate sees this as a way of getting Jesus out of his court because he knows that he's innocent. But the crowd cheers for Jesus to be put to death and for Barabbas to be freed. So Barabbas, this murderer, walks with no consequences, with no punishment. He walks out of a place of certain death into freedom. It's like in this one moment we see played out the whole story of what Jesus is about. This innocent, perfect God-man who has never put a foot wrong is punished while the guilty walk free. It's a divine exchange. And I remember growing up, I'd go to my grandparents' house and a lot of my grandfather's favourite films were those old movies like Spartacus and Samson and Delilah and movies like that. And, and this man, this person Barabbas would sometimes be betrayed in, uh, portrayed in these movies and he'd often be this kind of like shifty, dangerous looking criminal, really snarly, like a proper bad egg. And it actually says in the book of Romans that everyone has sinned, that we all fall short of God's glorious standard. And it makes me wonder if I'm really that much different to Barabbas, if all of us have fallen short. And I think talking about sin sometimes feels really weird. It feels uncomfortable and exposing. But none of us are perfect. And frankly, I may not have murdered anyone, but next to the perfection of Jesus, I'm just as imperfect as Barabbas. And I think as humans, we can often struggle to take ownership of our wrongdoing. I know I can. I can argue light is day sometimes just because I don't like being wrong or I don't have the humility to accept my selfishness and my weaknesses and my failings. 
And in a culture where we are encouraged to be independent and fierce and to be the best that we can be to get ahead, where we fight for what is ours, where our success and our achievement is encouraged to be above all things, here we have this example of a man who has only ever brought people out of a place of darkness and into the light, physically, mentally and emotionally, showing us once again why he is worthy of being loved and trusted and followed. Jesus knew Barabbas. He's God. He knows everything. He could have gotten out of this situation by pleading his case, by telling the truth of what he had been through, by arguing night is day. The injustice of it all is just too much. He could have done something supernaturally sensational, but he doesn't. Yet again, he chooses to stay in the thick of the mess. He chooses to allow the guilty to get out with no consequences in place of himself, foreshadowing the even bigger freedom that he's about to gift to the whole of humanity as he hangs and dies on the cross. And I'm conscious this morning that maybe talking about sin feels really like religious and maybe a bit... Um, like you're trying to guilt people. And that's not what this is about. It's not about trying to guilt anybody. It's to highlight just how beautifully generous Jesus is with his grace. How peaceful he is in the way that he loves us. So this morning, whether you feel like you don't need a saver or you do, just look to the person of Jesus. Find out a little bit more about him. Because... He's amazing and he takes the punishment that we all deserve so that we can live in eternal freedom.